Yes, Melvin Simmons. How you doing, man? Hi, Captain. <laughs> you know, I don't lead nothing. So you, 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 you know, well, I, I take that. I guess when I was in the cadet corps, I was—I don't know—I retired right, as, so as a lieutenant I'll, colonel. I switched them, so I switched to my other persona. What's that? Presente. Presente. <laughs> No, okay, okay. Well, I, I'm not going to argue with that. Let me just leave that one alone. We're here in New York uh, at, at one of your stomping grounds, uh, M&N, uh, the studios. Of, uh, I guess it's, what you, you would call a community? Public access. Oh, uh, yeah. Public access. But not not like public access back in the day. I used to love public access. No, man. no. Public access has evolved. Ah, uh, man. Like everything. Uh, Nothing stays the same. Uh, everything must change. I love raw though, man. Raw is my thing, man. Well, you can do raw. You just can't put it on here. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> they got this standards, man. Oh man, talk about raw. Now, now I first met you. I guess it was about eighty two, eighty three, somewhere around there, because we were taping various forums, and there was a lot of people trying to tape various forums. It got chaotic. Well, tell me about that. But, uh, yeah, um, we basically met doing the stuff, um, the stuff that uh, BAI was re uh, recording for um, rebroadcast. Uh, South the South Africa Free South African Movement, um, all the work that Alambe Braff and some more Marx were doing in the community. And I, but I was recording for for specifically for emanations, uh, for for Bernard's program emanations. Yes, we even though we would share everything, but you know, yeah, Alambe yeah, and I was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you were you were targeting. <laughs> I was not targeting. My thing was to get information, all the information we could to get back to the community. So basically what the sound gathers did is, is we recorded, every, I mean, um, political, cultural, economic stuff, anything that had to do with our community and, and that would affect our community. Uh, that's what we did. We, 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 uh, we were there to um, basically document it for historical purposes, also document it so people could see um, get, make a, a determination between termination between what they were getting over mainstream media and you know what was actually happening in the community. Mm -hmm. Well, what, I have to go deeper in this because you know we, we, I've talked throughout the years took my time. But what, why do you think you had that in your head? Why do you think you were dedicated to that? How what was I won't say what, you, what was your child what was your childhood like? But how did you evolve to that kind of understanding? That kind of specific understanding. Um. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, I said my my uh, education started uh, with uh, people like Dr. John Henry Clark. Uh, with Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Ben, as far as history, the, the importance of hi our history was concerned. But as com as for the com the community, uh, the 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 part where the community element came in came in particularly from WBAI, mm. because I had uh, when I first. Was Ran across WBAI. I mean, I was just knocked out by the stuff that I heard. And the morning um, wake up call when it started, and with with well, Bernard. But, 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 what, but what year? About what years was that? Oh, I when I uh, I think Bernard had must have just began to. Um, no, this is no. I started listening to Bernard. Had to be emanation is good. Yeah, Bernard emanation. Did, yeah, because yeah. Bernard didn't, didn't wake up. Yeah, was well, that yeah. way after emanations? Yeah, emanations. Yeah, mm -hmm. emanation would have been my first introduction to, to basically what was going on in the community. But so when did you, when did you start listening? That's what I'm trying to figure out. When did you, oh, uh, when, when did you say that? That would have to be, that would have to be sometime sometime in the early the, the late seventies. Okay, okay. Late seventies. Yeah, late seventies because. We started recording stuff by the by the eighties, so this was before I was I was in the field recording, mm -hmm. because when I look at back at my um my in house archives, we have tapes and stuff from emanations from some of the shows that y'all did on emanations. Yeah. yeah, I didn't come to emanations like I think it was eighty two or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, and I came just just as helping him out. I, I did Vox Pop for him for him because you know, it was just him, and I would literally I yeah. put the records back in the yeah. sleeve mm -hmm. for him and stuff like that. Yeah. It was just me and him, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't talk a lot. I mean, I just did the Vox mm -hmm. Pop and whatever, 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 whatever. Right. But, uh, but okay, so 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 you came. You started listening to BAI specifically for emanations, or how? What, no, what I started with emanations, but soon I started listening to the rest of the uh, the, uh, the the shows on on the net the na the, the network. Mm -hmm. I started with emanations, then I would then I looked at we started to behind the news, 
Hmm. And uh, and and uh, the stuff that uh, well, Samori was producing, Alambe was producing. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if Sally was there yet, but there was a couple other producers who were there who were producing stuff. Particular stuff come from the community, the black community. That's where I got my begin to the light begin to shine. And hmm. uh, ooh, I'm missing something here. Okay, well hold on a second. No, uh, I'm, I still want to go right before that. I'm trying to figure out how do you get to start listening to this kind of radio? Did you grow up in where did you grow up? Brooklyn. Okay, what were you listening? Were you listening to RL? What, what, what you listening I would to, listen uh, to RL, BLS, yeah, stuff like that. You, did you listen to you know uh, uh, was, what was that with uh, cousin Brucey when you was no, 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 you, no. you listened to the white radio. I might have listened to one or two right white radio stations, but not as not as much as I listened to the black radio stations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. not listen to black radio stations, and also to something else. See, my my consciousness. Was, was was being fired up by because I started I was an early reader I started reading the Amsterdam News mm. and a lot of stuff that would later become the forums and stuff and the different organizations mm. they had put articles in the Amsterdam News mm. they had do announcements in the Amsterdam News mm. I mean when I first I learned about First World Alliance mm. in the Amsterdam News mm. I learned about um, the Caribbean Cultural Center Marta Vega mm. in the Amsterdam News mm. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to get back to that, but it's, it's, one of the reasons why I, I said before, I keep on saying this. See, um, when you look at historical things, you know, you, if you go far back as, I don't think everybody ever read Ida B. Wells, but, you know, because they had that black press, yeah. if you wanted to find out some historical facts, you had to go back to that black, those kind of archives like that. But if you just want regular things, you know, whatever was written down, that was the thing. So all those Western novels, that, the, the lies about the West and have no black cowboys or whatever have you, because they, they, they're glorifying, you know. But, but they, now, so in other words, you had to go through somebody to somebody. So if you're going to look back 100 years ago, 150 years ago, Ago, you're going to get a different story because not everybody had the no. had the equipment right. or whatever happy right. to do that. So, but what's fascinating to me about your work really mm-hmm. is that, well, I should say coming up to monitor our work is that now somebody 150 years from now starts looking, they have many more force sources to find a truth right. or to find some threads to lead them to someplace. Right. You, ha- you have to really be searching. I like I, said, I was a personal search for information. I, I was doing that even before I knew knew about the rest of. I was always certain for certain information because once I was exposed to something like I said, like the um, the Amsterdam news and stuff like that, and I would read these articles and stuff. And like I said, a lot. And see, the the Amsterdam news propelled propelled me to read to go on the the, the newsstands and take a look at things like um, there was a magazine called Asia Africa it used mm-hmm. to come out. Mm-hmm. Now that magazine specifically focused on struggles in Asia and Africa and the connection between the, the two. Mm. And I would read that kind of stuff. That, that, that. And from reading that, that and the Amsterdam and then uh, stumbling on to WBAI, everything came together. This is interesting because, you know, in the 60s, I used to, real, I used to like ramparts. I, I had a subscription to Ive Stone Weekly. You know what I mean? I would do all kinds of things. I, would, I had a large spectrum too, but it was more, uh, was, I guess you call it radical, whatever, whatever perspective. But I'm, more, I'm, I'm really very interested. Uh, but was there, was there something in your home life, in your neighborhood, or something like that, that pushed you to, that people weren't doing, that you would just want to be a contrarian? What was going on there? No, well, the one, I had, I had a couple of examples in, in my home life. One was my father was at one time was a follower of Marcus Garvey, ah, and okay. he would tell me about Marcus Garvey, see, mm. and the, the, little, the little time that he uh, attended the meetings and stuff of Marcus Garvey, and I was already become political politically conscious anyway because I had been following the civil rights movement. I mean, I'd be sitting home. I remember sitting home, my, looking at this little black, and my father got this little black and white TV and seeing the marches and stuff, and one one and know. Hey, well, I like to get out there. I like to, my father would look at me. No, ain't time for you to get out there yet. You too, you too young to be you know, doing any marching and stuff like that. But that tough stuff like that. And then later on, uh, my mother took um, part in the um, the uh, welfare rights movements. And I remember, I remember going. We were. Go, I, sh- I went to her with, to a, was supposed to be just a little demonstration in Brooklyn. At, at the no, local uh, social service center, mm. was turned into almost a riot. Mm. And when I, you know, when I saw, once I saw what the way these police officers, and security officers, was handling, and this was these were just all women in mm. this protest, and they were handling, I really became enraged, you know, about how could y'all grown men be assaulting these women because they're trying to get their the the, the their rights. Make sure that they're getting all their rights they're supposed to get just for a little social service. Mm. Mm. 
So after that, I began to really look into stuff. Um, I began to, to, like I said, to start reading about Garvey, uh, Malcolm, and stuff, stuff that I didn't do before. I started to collect a library at that time. See, because before I did it, before I got to the, the video or the audio stuff, mm-hmm. I got to, the, I was into the literature. I began mm-hmm. to read. I would begin to search for books. I mean, I would go to the way a bunch of, they would use bookstores throughout the city at that time. And when I would go to the stores and look for stuff on black history, mm-hmm. I mean, besides my uh, hardcover library of black history mm-hmm. uh, material, I have a paperback uh, library, which is almost twice the size of early black literature. Every, anything that came out that was available, the uh, anthologies, uh, the political stuff, the the the, the, the uh, even stuff that deal with geography of the continent and stuff. I collected all that stuff. Anything I could find, I collected. You had room to put this stuff. Where would you put? Where, where, where well, again, yeah, all this stuff at the time I was living in a house, hmm. so we had. I had your, your parents' house. Yeah, I was in my parents' house. Yeah, so but having brothers and sisters. What? Yeah, I have two. I have a brother and a sister. Okay. But again, unless I was in a house. I had, I had, I had a, at that time. Uh, but I was living, and uh, we were living. I think we were in, the, we were in, yeah, we were in Queens that time. So I was in. Um, I had the attic, and I had the basement. <laughs> what was it? What was it? What was it? What was? What were your parents thinking about all this stuff? My father didn't mind. Mm-hmm. All he, listen, I was doing some construction. That's all he was interested in. Mm-hmm. See, because my father was a reader. My father had his own little library. Mm-hmm. See, my father was into studying and stuff. So when I started collecting stuff and loading up, loading up the attic and then, then loading up the basement, because basically at one point, I, mean, I took over the basement. Mm. The basement became virtually my little library and laboratory. Mm. That's where all the electronic stuff, that's where all my, my recording stuff went, mm. and that's where all the, all the beginning of the archives started in, in that basement. Mm. The, in the attic, uh, in my particular, because my attic was divided up. You had a, a living space, and then you had a walking, like a like a little crawl space, a, a huge crawl space, like mm-hmm. a closet. Mm-hmm. All the books, the the magazines and stuff, that's where all that stuff went at. Mm-hmm. And by the time I, we left that house, I mean, basement was full, the attic was full. Mm-hmm. So when I so when we moved uh, and we moved to a smaller space, the first thing I had to do was start looking for storage. Mm-hmm. That was that was my first experience with storage because I had to to save that stuff. I had to finally get get into get into storage, mm. and as again as the time went on, as I started working with more with BAI and and these other organizations and, and doing stuff, and also still collecting material because I'm still at the same time I'm recording stuff, audio. Later I'll be recording recording video. I'm still I'm still I'm still subscribing to magazines. I'm still I'm still picking up I'm still going looking for literature any kind of literature I can find on the continent mm-hmm. and in particularly the thinkers mm-hmm. the scholars stuff stuff is still being collected mm-hmm. so it came to a point where it was I have a huge library plus the archives mm-hmm. to deal with well let, let's say I'm, I'm not going to make too long in this this first part here but I just need to know a couple of things I want to stay in that era mm-hmm. um, you mentioned that the Asia Africa thing what, what other uh, um, um, sources can you can you tell us that existed at that time perhaps doesn't I'm, I'm not just talking about CP and Ebony magazine and jet <laughs> magazine I'm sorry since I mean ebony magazine um, but I'm just uh, things that we know, people wouldn't normally uh, think about that um, at that t- at that same time a lot of the organizations that I was recording, were producing pamphlets, mm. little pamphlets and, and booklets. Do you still have those? Things? I have those. Oh Lord! Ooh man! I have all the most of the pamphlets that the First World Alliance produced. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. I have the now the um, Liberation Bookstore. Oh, we love that! Oh man, I used to hang out there. Now Una had a huge collection of pamphlets. Mm-hmm. As many as I could get, I got. I bought. And I would be like I said, and when I'm saying I'm collecting stuff from everywhere. Any place I can find that they got some information concerning the continent and African people, I'm collecting it. Any place that I can find later on that had any information on people of color, any place in the world, I'm collecting it. I'm studying the whole the whole thing, the whole shebang. I want to understand how African people and people of color in the world what kind of struggles they went through, what's their history, what's their, cult, what's their cultural manifestations. Mm. So 
I started, uh, once I got to that, that phase, then I started going, dealing with the different African studies departments. And once I started hooking up with the different African studies departments, like at, at Columbia, uh, Baruch, um, City College, um, Hostos, uh, J- uh, Jersey City State, I'm getting stuff from them. They're calling me in to do stuff. I'm getting stuff. Like I said, I'm getting. I'm They're calling you in to record. They're calling me in to record. Mm-hmm. I'm still. I'm building this picture. Mm-hmm. And also, I'm getting to understand that the most important parts of our history as a people on this planet have been kept from us. Mm-hmm. And then, then also, there's a machine also on the other end that's putting out propaganda against it. That's against us. Mm-hmm. And it's a machine. Because one thing I learned at a lot of these different conferences was that uh, the scholars, the stuff the scholars would be presenting to us, most of the time they say, well, let me tell you what, why I came to even look at this area. Mm-hmm. Because I, 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 you know, I, I might have, in a conversation with one of the other scholars at, on, at, the, at the institution that I'm at, they're telling me this, doesn't, this, uh, this study is not necessary. We don't need to do this study. Mm-hmm. Because there's nothing there for you. Mm. So what? So so the scholar would tell me, said, "Listen." I, then I went and started looking into the area myself. I flashed the light into that dark hole, and voila! There's a treasure. There's a treasure trove in there. Mm. See. So by having conversations like that with the scholar, then I begin to understand more and more the importance of the documentation that we had to do. That's why I begin to look, you know, stay on people's case about, listen, if you go in, this is the way I want you to document this. Mm-hmm. I want you to make sure you get all the information. Just don't go in there and get the speakers. Get the program. Mm-hmm. If they have uh, catalog information, a list of books and stuff, get that information from them. Mm-hmm. If, there's, if there's a conversation they want to have on the side, if possible, that they couldn't do at the panel, get that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You would call a pure archivist, man. Yeah. A, a, a mole, a mole, a digger. Uh, what, what do you call them? What do, what do you call them? The, not the gophers, but the, the, other, the other people that keep on digging and whatever. Hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, again, I, I keep on saying I want to stop here, but let, let, let me just go one thing. But there's no institution that backs you. No. We were clear from the beginning. At least I was clear. And later on, a lot of the people who worked with me got clear. That we are going to be doing this. We're going to be pathfinders. We're about to do something that has not been done before. So that means we have to begin to, to begin to put together a certain techniques unique to what we're doing. We have to have a, 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 a rules and a procedures to make sure that how this is going to be done in an orderly fashion, a scientific or scientific fashion. Mm-hmm. So that's what we did. I sat down and worked it out. What was how we, uh, um, uh, certain guidelines, I'm going to set up some guidelines for people to go out to record, record material mm-hmm. and a guidelines to reserve it, a guidelines concerning what is the priorities. Because at, uh, by the time we got started, by the time they, uh, we got started into the 80s, stuff was exploding all over the city. There were like forms going on every night someplace in the city. So we had to work out guidelines on what we would go, how we target, you know, specific stuff. Specific material, because we couldn't cover everything. Yeah, that's where I guess that's where we, I, I, I'm going to deal with that a little bit later. I'm just staying on this thing about institutionalization and things right now. But you still have no institutional support. What happens to all your archives? Is, what kind of fire protection do you have? Well, well uh, and it says any institution. I'm talking about you know. Well, has any institution approached you and say, hey, we're going to help you with this? What's what's going on on that level? At that time, no. And I'm talking about now. Now it's a little different. Now I have some people who have come together and we're forming a little collective, which basically is going to be, we're going to use my collective, my uh, archives as a model for a project that would, would get institutions to, um, to fund and probably support see, and, and, and preserve. Now, uh, uh, still on that, my association with you, because I had a lot of archives, and I'm, I'm, I move, as you know, I, I just, I'm just, that's I just know. the way it is. I mean, maybe my sister might have my books. My, my best friend in St. Louis might have my writings. But no, but, and then some people have my music, you know. Well, let I'm me having. say something to you, Mr. But, Sloan. But hold on. Just, uh, okay, go ahead, say it. I'll, I'll wait, man. Go ahead. I'll, I'll finish It is phone. time. It's part time for you, Bernard, and the rest of y'all to take all that, get this material, and get this place into one spot. Well, that's not, all my all my all my kind of stuff like that 
is with you. Yeah, the but, audio stuff I have. Yeah, but I don't. I don't have. I don't do video. I mean, well, I just started. You might. No, no, well, but I mean, it, it's not even necessary. That we ain't talking about. I'm talking about preserve like your writings. Just your writings alone. That's important. That's true. I, I, I saw some stuff. I said, ooh, See, because, did I write that? Because let me explain something. something I, came, I came to a conclusion, you know, to a, a long time ago. It wasn't about just preserving the audio and video. Mm. It was preserving the libraries. Mm. Dr. J has a library that's in his house, mm. has taken over his garage. He had a storage space. Mm. He had to take the stuff out, of, out to take the books out of store because they were, <laughs> the storage space said, no, we can't, you, we're moving, you got to get this stuff out of here. Mm. So he had to take his stuff out and take it someplace else. But again, the the, the library, just the, the paperwork alone, the letters, the, the, the stuff. Yeah, no. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I looked through some stuff, uh, some documentation that people had just written me at the time about conferences and stuff. And the documentation, the, 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 those documents are important because it, it tells the story of the evolution of, you know, the projects they were working on. Yeah, plus people might have diaries or whatever. Well, I, mean, uh, uh, I hear you. But again, I don't like centralization. As you know, one of the things about about that I loved about the sound when we when we first started talking about it is loose that every, every, everybody have a loose association. Yeah. You own your stuff. You give us a really good copy, the best copy you can, but you keep your original and you mm -hmm. just keep, well, we did that for so We won't get into why we had to do it that way. <laughs> but the point is, um, I, guess, and, and, um, I guess all I'm trying to ask is there any kind of institution that does these that temperature control, whatever have you? That it, let's let's keep the loose association. That you would say, look, uh, we're going to change this to digital. To, to, we're going to digitalize. Whatever have you. you can have the pristine digital copy. I'm still keeping the original, or vice versa. I mean, if, if the, um, at this point, that would have to be created. That's something we've been we've been this, I've been discussing with people over the last couple of months. We will have to create that institution because there, that, there's no such institution. There's no vision for that kind of institution. At least not among for people of color. Now I hate that term, people of color. But go ahead. But I understand. Well, I, I, right. Yeah, because see, I've been looking at other people's institutions. Mm. Now here, here recently, which is, I mean, just tells you how behind we are. A group of people got together, and they bought a church. Mm -hmm. I don't recall where this church is at. I have to do some research and I have to look at my records. Uh, but anyway, what they did was they, they bought this church and they filled the church with servers. With who? Servers. Okay. Servers. Oh, yeah. Oh, computer, yeah. Computer servers. And what they did is the United States government was taking all the scientific uh, information concerning climate change, dumping it. Mm hmm they decide to copy everything onto those servers. So that when this this administration is gone, when people need those files to continue their, 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 their struggle on climate, um, the climate change, they'll have those records. Those records will still be there. Mm. Yeah, that's similar to what the, the whole, uh, the internet thing, the, 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 there's an organization um, that, that if you put yes. up a web page, no matter where it's, like an old web page I had, like when I started my, like in the 89 yes. or something like that, yeah. is up there somehow. Right. Thing. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, 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 what I, we have to do at this point. Okay, hold, hold, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. What go ahead. we have to do at this point, and, I, and I've been preaching this, and in fact, it's funny because before Gil Noble passed, I wrote a proposal for Gil about putting together an institution that would house the, all the documents, the, the, the audio video documents, also would be a teaching and a learning facility and a production facility. Mm. And that's what we have to do. Okay. Um, um, this is the level that I'm, I'm trying to think of. You know, I have... I still have, I have a conspiracy, be here so long, whatever, a lot of places long. I have this conspiracy fog always in my I head, something like that. Is good, well, listen. <laughs> my thing, again, is, again, the original thing about the sound gathers, you have, you make a pristine copy, copy, whatever you want to copy. The copy, the pristine copy, or even the original, goes to this centralized, whatever you want to call yeah. it, place. You keep the original thing. But again, it's almost like you become a satellite of your own thing, but also yeah. you have to, have to wait. You get funded somehow to preserve your thing cor correctly. Right. Now, so as to me, so in other words, it has to be centralized, decentralized. Right. Centralized, decentralized. Decentralized, right. however yeah. you want to say it that we way. we got to use multiple models. That, exactly. But here's the trick. 
I'm looking lately because, as you know, I, li I live on the continent, you know, and I'm looking lately as like, you know, things are, are really rapidly yeah. changing there, yeah. you know, and the young people are not having it, you know what I mean? They don't have it with these old people, whatever, whatever their model, this, well, no, no. this, this, whatever. No, 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 they're connected. Yeah, but I'm going like several places in Africa should have sort of like doing the same thing, you know what I mean? I should be able to send my stuff to, I will, let me just pick a country, say, 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 uh, 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 say Malawi. Ghana. No, 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 I'm going to say Ghana because everybody's going to Ghana. Say Malawi. Right. You know what I mean? I want, I want a, you know, the, 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 Malawi's uh, uh, um, archive, you know, north, my, south, my archive, north, with, south, east, and west. There you go, <laughs> and even all over the planet. Yeah. Okay, so let's end this part right here. I want to talk more specifically about uh, some other things, but uh, thank you. This, let's call this part whatever. <laughs> <laughs>